A good Wednesday evening to you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Kickin' Chickens, West Ashley location. This is the Mike Houston Radio Show, live tonight until 8 o'clock here on Sports Radio 1450. I'm Mike Legg alongside the coach, and uh, congratulations, coach. Uh, the, the words that uh, a lot of people just love hearing, and that is, you beat Furman. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, I think uh, – I think our, 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 our fans are obviously excited about a two-game win streak and excited about a homecoming win. But I think uh, the fact that it was Furman uh, probably added more uh, enjoyment to that than any, any other win we could possibly have. So pretty exciting weekend. And uh, you, uh, you had them the whole way, no problems. <laughs> Everything was, you know, just a straight-up normal boring ball game, right? Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was, it was about what we've seen every week where uh, it went back and forth all day and uh, – you know, we've certainly had our backs against the wall uh, there in the fourth quarter, but uh, the kids stuck together and uh, I found a way to get us to overtime and then played really, really well in overtime. So, uh, you know, really proud of the way they uh, finished the game off. You kind of knew coming into this ball game that even though a lot of the talk about Furman was, oh, they're beat up, they've got so many kids hurt, they've had a really rough season, they're 2-7 and seven coming into the ball game. Uh, I, I think you knew, didn't you, that this was going to be kind of one of those nip and tuck type ball games? Sure, and you know, you, you look at the Coastal Carolina game, which is a game that went to overtime, and Coastal Carolina is the number one ranked team in the country. That uh, yeah, they're having a rough season, but they, you know, there's a ton of talent on that roster, and you know, they can talk about you know they got a guy out here, a guy out there, but all I know is the players they put on the field were you know big, strong, athletic, good-looking players. Uh, they played very, very well on Saturday, especially their quarterback. Uh, P.J. Blazkowski, uh, and you know, which did not surprise me. I think he's very talented. I think he's going to be a pain in our side for several years to come, which I mentioned last week. Um, but it was really a great college football game, and one that was very enjoyable for the fans to watch. 42-35 in overtime was the uh, decision there for the Citadel Bulldogs in front of a homecoming crowd that particular day. Let's walk through that game just a little bit. Uh, in somewhat of a nutshell, they jump out to a lead very quickly, a 7 nothing lead, uh, and did so in a pretty short order. It, uh, it was one of those things I'm sure that you, you, you were like, oh, I could have done without that when they were on the opening yeah. kickoff. You gave you know, it to we, them. We really worked all week on, uh, on our kickoff return and, and thought we had a chance to pop one. And, and Brandon uh, you know, got out in the open field and then uh, you know, just uh, had the ball stripped right there on our sideline right in front of us and gave them the ball on the 30-yard line, which is not the way you want to start the day. And uh, then Devontae gave up the quick post route there, and, and you know, they're up 7 nothing. So it did not start well, but, you know, we battled back and, uh, you know, came back and scored uh, to cut it to 7-6 and uh, kind of went back and forth there for, for most of the first half. And, you know, uh, I, thought, I thought it was significant being able to uh, score right before the half, get the two-point conversion to go into the half tied, uh, which – kind of you know gave our kids uh you know kind of a, okay hey it's nothing nothing let's start over uh coming out of the locker room there in the third quarter you were down 28 13 with 808 to go in the second quarter so almost halfway home in the second quarter and able to score a couple of the times to do uh to, to get to the halftime tie that you uh, you mentioned and then you know you're on pace at that point to score 56 points apiece yeah. but things kind of settled down a little bit in the they did half. and you know really one busted play is all we gave up uh, defensively there in the second half. But, you know, they, they were obviously knocking on the door several times uh, and, and came away empty. Uh, but, you know, overall I, w I, was, I was fairly pleased with our offense, especially in the first half, kept us in the ball game. But throughout much of the day, uh, you know, we were very effective offensively, and Aaron Miller had another huge day. Uh, and so, you know, really pleased with the production there. Style. Selection. Service. Quality. Value. See what everyone is talking about. Ashley Furniture Home Store. Just from what I listed here, uh, and obviously can't limit it to that. But I think back on four plays all on the offensive side of the football that were eye-openers, yeah, big-time plays. 
You had uh, Renew's touchdown. Yep. After he fumbled. Right. Which was kind of a, I don't know, uh, a redemption type right. of a touchdown sure. for him. Sure. So that was Great a cut. that was a big one yep. there. And it was the one that sent us to overtime. Yeah. Exactly. And then uh, Derogi's catch. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know, <laughs> what he, first he was he was so wide open that you know like, you're like this can't be you know <laughs> that late in the game. And then, uh, you know, by the time Aaron saw him, he had to throw it so far down the field. You know, like you wonder, you know, how accurate can he be on this pass? And, he, and then by that time, a defender's there, and he makes this acrobatic catch as he's being almost tackled. So, uh, what a play. It was amazing. You had a great catch by Glover coming back right. over a defensive player to make a catch above his head. Yep, which ended up setting up the uh, – uh, the score right there uh, before the halftime that uh, led to tying the game going into the locker room. Now, on Vinny's 10-yard uh, right. uh, catch from Aaron yeah. Miller, that was part of the setup. And then Stenson's catch just above the shoe tops. Which to me is probably, that was the play that stood out the most on the day. Uh, you know, and, and the reason why is just kind of kind of has a lot to do with Jake. You know, he's been playing uh, injured ever since the Wofford game, and he's been playing with an injury that, you know, a lot of guys would just call it a season. Yeah. Uh, but it's his senior year, and, you know, he wants to be out there, so he practices enough to stay sharp during the week. Uh, and, you know, he goes out there. He, he The ball was not perfectly thrown. He knows he's going to get hit. He makes the catch. He, 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 he breaks two tackles, uh, breaks a third, jumps from the four-yard line, and uh, somehow gets the ball across the, the goal line there. And, and it was, you know, we were down 28-13 at the time. So it's a, you know, it's a – kind of a desperation kind of deal he's trying to get in there on third down and, and is able to convert and just what a you know just what a special play uh by a gutsy football player very amazing uh, yeah. where that was concerned and so you answered the question for me i actually was going to list them and, te and and have you say which one was the best but you got it with stenson and i would have to agree uh with the way that thing all played out it was uh it was quite awesome. There were other highlights in the game. Vinny Miller had a good game in terms yeah, of uh, very solid. You know, uh, I, I, yeah, a lot of what he does. Uh, you know, he scores on a touchdown catch in the ball game, but uh, also uh, had a decent day running the football on a day where the football team rushed for 4:07 uh, in the game. Vinny had 43, but uh, six yards a carry. Uh, which is solid, and I know a lot of what he does has to do with blocking there. Yeah, and he, re he really did a good job. It's probably his best game blocking interiorly. We, we ran a counter, counter lead play, which we had not shown yet this year. I had not ran counter lead in several years, uh, and uh, we put that in for this ball game just to kind of you know keep them uh, off balance a little bit. And so he's the lead blocker on that. He did a good job of uh, leading up in there on their linebacker for, for, for Jonathan on several plays. So. Uh, solid day blocking interiorly. Charleston Crab House has been serving locals and visitors alike for the last 20 years. We have our crispy whole flounder. We have the seared ahi tuna. You name it, in the seafood business, we have it. Be sure to stop by the Tiger and Leaf Lounge whenever you visit our location. We have many frozen and specialty drinks, awesome margaritas. One of my favorites is the Wapu Punch. If you don't like it down in the historic district, come over to James Island, sit on the Intercoastal Waterway. It is an unbelievable view where it's southern seafood at sensible prices and a darn good time. They have a quarterback named Michael Eubank. He's a transfer from Arizona State. He's the third-rated passer in the Southern Conference. 65% of his passes are completions. He's thrown for 1,783 yards, 10 touchdowns. He's had two 300-yard passing days at Furman and against Wofford. And so Michael Eubank, who... Not only was at Arizona State for three years, obviously he, he right. didn't just sit uh, around. He did play uh, uh, for that program out there. Big kid, too, at quarterback. Yeah. You've got another, uh, another good quarterback to deal with this week. Yeah, 6'6", 250, so he's a, he's a big guy. Big he is kid. their second leading rusher, uh, so he's a mobile, mobile player. Uh, but at the same time, he, you know, he, he throws the ball very well in the pocket, uh, throws the ball well down the field. Uh, has a lot of talent around him, has a very big offensive line, uh, you know, similar to UNC Charlotte uh, style offensive line. So, uh, you know, a very talented offense we're facing on Saturday. They have a back named Denzel Williams who actually played run a defensive back a year ago for them. Uh, he's third in the Southern Conference in rushing behind Aaron Miller, who's second, and Alex Lakes from Mercer, who's first. Five yards a carry, 789 yards, 15 rushing touchdowns. 
and he's had 100-yard games on three different occasions so far this year. So that's a nice story for them, a guy who played defensive back and didn't really play a ton, and then he moves right. over and becomes a major contributor. Yeah, and he's, you know, he's really an electric player, good, uh, good strength and power, good speed, uh, leads the conference in scoring right now. Uh, had 156 yards last week against Western. So, uh, you know, I, I think really their offense kind of, you know, flows through him and, and, has, and has developed that way. So, got to got to do a good job of shutting him down on Saturday. And it sounds like a broken record, but there's a pretty good wide receiver in the mix yep, as no, well. No doubt. Uh, number number three, Kareel Hamilton uh, has had a, has a great year. He's leading the conference in receptions per game. Uh, and Great speed, uh, I think 45 catches on the season mm -hmm. so far. So, uh, you know, we'll be challenged there as well. He's had four 100-plus yard games, had 206 in the Furman ball game. And so uh, a solid guy where that one is concerned. They've got a, on the other side of the ball, they're 4-3. They're a spread offense. Uh, Justin Cooper, 69 tackles, leads them there. Josh Kimberlin has three interceptions. Uh, Jaquaski Tart is on the Buck Buchanan Award watch list. Has over 270 career tackles and six career picks. And so you've got guys on the other side of the ball that are pretty talented as well. Yeah, and their free safety, Tart, is, is as good a safety as we've seen all year. He's very athletic. FCS, I mean, outside of the Florida State right, guys. Right. i got to qualify that. But <laughs> he, he, I think he's the best safety in our league. Uh, very athletic, good tackler, uh, loose hips, good speed, uh, very experienced. Uh, you know, I think everybody's consensus was that uh, you know if he hadn't gotten injured last year, he probably would have left early and entered the draft. Uh, so you know, a, a fantastic player there. Their Mike Backer uh, Cooper is is uh, leading the team in tackles. Uh, good speed. Uh, you know, good leader for them there up front. They're very big up front. Uh, um, Michael Pierce, who his brother Miles plays for us. Michael is a uh, is a, a three technique for them. We'll probably line up some at the nose guard on Saturday. research I've discovered that they do Bobby Bowden played at Samford in the 50s was their head coach in the late 50s and early 60s his son Terry Bowden was Samford's head coach from 87 to 92 before he took over at Auburn and Jimbo Fisher the coach of the Seminoles now played quarterback for Terry Bowden and was an assistant coach at Samford from 88 to 92 that's like very few degrees of separation on uh, the Florida State Seminoles, which are uh, uh, a team that the dogs know a great deal about, uh, and they are currently number three in the four teams ranked to play in the uh, four-team tournament for college football's national championship. They still haven't lost a game. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know that they will in the regular season. So uh, it'll be exciting to see the playoff format this year with uh, at the uh, FBS level and um, I think it's something that will be good for the game. And, uh, you know, who knows uh, with the success of that, you may see it expand sometime in the future. And, and uh, it'll just be, it'll be a, an exciting new wrinkle. It's neat. Uh, we've always had the, the crazy debate back and forth over the two best teams. Now the crazy debate just expands to who sure. your four teams are, yeah. you know. But and it's neat. It's whoever neat. number five is, they'll be, you know, th that'll be the new debate. Right now, know. that's Alabama, right. which is an awfully good football team. They can change it on Saturday. They play Mississippi State, the number one team in the country. So uh, the FBS uh, game is exciting. We're close to the 24-team tournament that decides the FCS champion. And that game uh, to decide the championship will be in uh, early January, January the 10th this year. And so that all gets underway in about three weeks uh, from right now. Samford comes in, Coach, to me, with some pretty impressive statistics. Right. Uh, sometimes they can be skewed by the opposition that you've played. Yeah. Uh, I'll get your opinion on where you think they fall with that. Offensively, for example, they rank first or second in the Southern Conference in uh, scoring offense, total offense, 
passing offense and third down conversions. And so they appear to be pretty solid as far as the offensive side goes. And They are. You know, that, <laughs> so it bears it out. Good, yeah, you know. good football team. Now, now, granted, they've played two teams in Steelman and Concordia that maybe aren't the strongest in the, in, in the world and in lower division teams. Uh, but at the end of the day, they, you know, they've put up some big numbers against some very, very good teams also. The defensive side, they rank first, second, or third in all of those categories, scoring right. defense second, total defense second, rushing defense third, passing defense first. They only allow 150 yards a game on the ground, so something's right. got to give on Saturday. Yeah, and you know they held Wofford under 200 yards rushing, even though Wofford won the ball game. Uh, so obviously they're a, a, a talented uh, foe. They've they've, uh, they've they've always played the triple option pretty well. I know the uh, Citadel was able to beat them last year. Uh, in a game that was also played in Charleston. Uh, but I, I do think they came into that game pretty beat up last year. I think they're very healthy this year coming into this game. Uh, so, I, you know, I think we're seeing a very, very good Sanford football team. If you could pick what what you could get leading into a game among these two choices, what would you go for? You have film with them against a team that plays a similar offense as you. Right. Example, Wofford. Mm -hmm. Or you would rather – they be seeing a team like you for the first time? Which would you prefer? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, because at least you have a good idea of what you're going to see, and so that helps in preparation. Uh, if you don't, then, you know, even though you have to prepare for anything, because they can obviously change, uh, they've been pretty consistent with the look that they've shown versus flex bone option teams for the past several years. They have not had staff turnover. Uh, their associate head coach, uh, is the defensive coordinator has been there the entire time with Coach Sullivan, so you expect things to stay the same. Uh, it does help in knowing what you're going to see. Now, you know, if it was a team that had never faced a triple option team, then maybe you would you would prefer them not to have played Wofford. But, you know, year in, year out, you have us and Wofford both in this league running this, the flex bone offense, so it's not like their, their, their coaches and kids are not used to competing against this style of offense. Since 2002, the lottery has helped award more than one million scholarships. So when you play, you're not just taking a chance. You're also giving one.